Did you call in to report that you were going off duty? Uh, I was upstairs when I heard Lieutenant Kilrain's in with the chief. I got to talk to him. Look, I know how you feel, kid. And maybe you've got a little more reason. But there's not a man in this department that don't want to help bring in the priest killer. You're not ready for this sort of thing. You think I'm going to ride around on a bike? I look big. Lieutenant. What have you got for us, Gilrain? Summers will fill you in upstairs. Uh, come on, Summers, give us a little break. Come on, you're so hot. We'll talk about it upstairs. Lieutenant Kilrain? Yeah? I'm Joe Martini. So? I wanted to talk to you about Father Tomasino. You got something for me? Well, no, sir. I just wanted to know what happened. He was a close friend of the priest's. The father got him his job here. Well, there's not much to tell, son. Someone phoned him at the parish house last night, said they had to see Father Tomasino right away. He went. Whoever it was called him wouldn't let him go back. You got any leads working for you? I'm going to have you standing here. No, so far we got big fat nothings. I want to help. It's homicides, baby, now. Nothing you can do that we're not doing. Well, you can use me. Transfer me to homicide. Look, Martini, my desk is loaded with telegrams. The switchboard's jammed with calls. Everybody in North Beach wants to help to find the guy who killed the priest. It was more than just a priest to me. That's why you'd be in the way. Send him back to traffic where he belongs. Joe. Why don't you take a couple of days off? I'll square it with your captain. told them, Joe. How do I tell them? Why? Why did it happen? How could God let a thing like this happen? Death is in the pattern of life, Joe, as is birth, which no one questions. I'm questioning it, Mother Catherine. Why? I know how much Father Thomasina meant to you. No, Mother. you don't. You couldn't. Ever since I can remember, he's been... I was here when he brought you. You were six years old. 
A frightened little boy who had just lost his parents and was all alone. Except for him. He was my family. If he would have died in his sleep or he'd been hit by a car would be hard enough. But to be stabbed in the back in an alley. I don't understand, Mother Catherine. I'm struggling with it, too. Come, let us pray for Father Thomas. The way he lived his life, he doesn't need my prayers. Then pray for the one who took his life. Joe, don't leave this place with hate in your soul. Goodbye, Mother. tried to keep out of your hair up till now. We've appreciated it. But we're up against a blank wall. Until we come up with a motive, there's nothing much we can do. Now, you are Father Tomasino's closest friend, his assistant pastor. There must have been somebody in the parish you hated. I don't know how you can say that. Everybody loved him. Let's skip the emotion this time, Father. Whether you like it or not, Father Tomasino did have an enemy. I refuse to believe that. Then who killed him? A friend? Yes, Gillen. It's the martini kid. I sent out a word. I haven't got time. I can't see him now. That's why he asked me to bring him up. Hello, Father. Hello, Joe. Shut the door. All right, son. What is it? The other day, when I wanted a transfer to homicide, you asked me if I had anything. Well, I think I've come across something. What is it? It's a man. It's nothing definite, you know. You might even call it a hunch. But at least it's something to start with. I've done some checking around already. Get to the point. Well, I saw him at the funeral. He was going through hell. He used to be a member of the parish. His name is Silvio Malatesta. You know him, Father? Of course. Everybody in North Beach knows him. Likes him. Joe, you made a terrible mistake. Silvio had a reverence for Father Tomasino. It was almost a childlike adoration. I'm telling you, he was going through the tortures of the damned. He was bleeding inside. He was tearing his hands. Dozens of people are breaking up over Father Tomasino. We can't go around arresting people just because of the expressions on their faces. Well, it was more than just the expression. All right, he was suffering. What would he have said if he'd seen your face? Well, I think it's worth checking. We'll check hunches later. Right now, we're after facts. Facts? The facts are you got nothing and you get no place. Get him out of here, Gillen. I see him around here again, I'll have his job. Now, Father, let's go over this again. Give it up, will you, Joe? You've been on a run since it happened. Now, I covered you with your captain, but the funeral is over. I'm fresh out of excuses. You won't need him anymore. What are you doing? Look, I just can't sit around doing nothing. Joe, do you know what you're doing? Reinstatement ain't easy. I saw Malatesta's face. You didn't. Well, say something. Nice little crabs. Little crabs. 
Hey, Grazioli. Tell him the only time he has ever seen a bigger crab is when one of mine walks into his store. <laughs> he says the only time you've seen a better crab. I heard them. I heard them. The problem with you, Antonio, is you won't take your boat near the rocks. The ones you catch haven't learned to crawl yet. <laughs> All right, Big Mart. I bet I got a bigger crab in my store than you got right here. Ten dollars. You'll take them? No. Oh. I already saw your wife walk in. Silvio Malatesta? Yeah. Joe Martini. What can I do for you? You don't know the name? Uh, should I? I guess he didn't get a chance to talk to you about it before. Well, forget it. Who didn't get a chance to talk to me? A friend of mine. I'm looking for a job. He said he was going to talk to you. Maybe you could find something for me. Yeah? Who is it? Father Tomasino. You knew him, didn't you? Father Tomasino? Oh, sure. He was a true saint of a man. His death left a big emptiness inside of us. You, uh, you done any fishing before? I worked a squid boat out of uh, Monterey, but that was a couple of years ago. I wish I could do something for you, but things are pretty slow right now. Maybe, maybe when the salmon start to run again. Yeah, yeah, I know. How much do I owe you? Oh, not a thing. On the house. Oh, no, no. I want to pay for it. Ah, hundreds. forget it. Thanks. Say, I'll check with some of the other boys. If there is something, where can I get in touch with you? Well, I haven't got a place yet. This is the first time I've been in town that Father Tomasino didn't set things up for me. Oh. You know, it's funny. Not being able to get together with him. Yeah. Kind of lonely. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. Hey! Hey! Why don't you come to my house for dinner tonight, huh? Uh, well, I, I couldn't do that, Silvio. Thanks, but... Uh... Oh, come on. Meet the family. Maybe we can talk about a job for you. But I don't want you to go to any trouble. There's no trouble. You'll be here at five. That's the time I leave. Take you home. Give you a nice dinner. You can use it. Okay, Silvio. Thanks. Let's say I'm doing it for uh, Father Tomasino. He would want me to do something for one of his boys. Okay, Silvio. I see you around five, huh? Sure. Here, here. Don't you know stealing is a sin? Huh? Don't you know stealing is a sin? If you want anything, you ask for it. Here. Wait a minute. For you. For your brother. Go on. Joe. Come on, Joe, I show you. You got a free hand, give a whistle. Mama! Look out, Joe. Don't step on the pasta. Yeah. Hey, Mama! Home. Now the whole neighborhood knows. Put more water in the sauce. I brought somebody for dinner. One more, one less makes no difference. Hey, Mama. This is Joe. Joe Martini, one of Father Tomasino's boys. Hello. Hello. You're not the neighborhood boy. I, I was up north. I just got into town. Mama, oh. I got a present for you. A present? Yes. Where did you see it? 
A new frame for Papa's picture. We don't need it. But he hasn't got a frame. Fix the old one. I don't want it. What are you talking about? You don't even know how it's going to look. Come on. There's nothing wrong with the old frame. They can't fix it anymore, Mama. It's been mended too many times. Come here, look. Oh. Look at this, huh? Come on, Joe. Ah, isn't that nice? Stylish? Tu spendi troppi soldi, figlio mio. I know what's wrong with you. You think the other one is old-fashioned. You think everything in the house is old-fashioned. Next thing I know, you'll be taking off Papa's mustache. <laughs> hey, Joe. Who's more of a man? Papa or me? Parli troppo, tu. If you were half the man, it would be enough. I settle for 25%, Mama. Oh. Oh, ma finisci la bike con tutte queste storie mi fai bruciare hey, la salsa. Come on, you gotta meet the rest of the family. Hi. My brother Fina, he thinks slow is a dirty word. In regard to your letter of June 21st, comma, our shipment of 70 dozen shirts, comma, style C-136 through F-420, comma, was dispatched on May 9th in accordance with your shipping instructions, period. We're forwarding your letter to Mr. Smith for further action. No, Thomas, no, stop that! Along with instructions to send a train. Oh, you see what you did. We I was up to Mr. Smith and now I've lost him. Why you talk so back. fast? Why? Every day you come. My cousin Anna, she talks back to records. Honey, this is Joe Martini. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Martini. Call him Joe. That's his name. He's going to have dinner with us tonight. That's nice. Look at the chicken scratching, Joe. That's the way she wastes her time. I ask you, which is more waste? Studying to be a secretary from the mail or the school or sitting around the house doing nothing? Did we bring you from Italy to be a secretary? No. When her parents die, we said, Cousin Anna, you come over here and live with us. We'll take good care of you. Find you a nice husband. Find me a husband. I find him bait for your fish. I don't want a husband. I want to work. Work? For what? No women in my family work. They get married. Hey, Joe. Joe, have you ever seen a prettier girl in San Francisco? Never. Now you say something nice about him. Oh, stop it, Silvio. Well, at least say that he hasn't got two heads. All right, Joe, you haven't got two heads. Thank you. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough water in the sauce now. Go call your brother. Okay, Mama, okay. okay. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Pietro! Supper! Right now, not next week! Why do you keep asking me what I run the mile for, Mama? Because it's a mile race, that's why. And I've got to win for Galileo next week. Now, if those knuckleheads from oh, Polly... That's crazy. If you go someplace, okay, but you end up where you start. Next year, Joe, I'm going out for the two miles. The grocery store is half a block away. I can't even get him to walk. <laughs> hey, you know something? We broke a record tonight. This is the first time we had a young fellow to dinner that Anna doesn't hurry away from the table. Hey, you're doing all right. Say, remember that joker, Tony Malfi? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Hey, Joe, this Tony Malfi, he got a scholarship to college. Play football for Notre Dame. But halfway through the soup, Anna got a headache. A real headache from his talk of blocking and tackling and to throw and to kick the football. Oh, <laughs> how about Harry Boncelli? <laughs> his mom and papa still don't talk to us. She wouldn't even let him in the house. <laughs> That's the idiot who follows me in his car when I walk down the street. And he blows his horn at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the same. She would rather stay home than waste her time with an idiot. I keep saying to her. How are you going to know an idiot if you never give him a chance to prove it? <laughs> the minute they open their mouths, they prove it. I just can't stand stupid talk. Joe hasn't said a word since he sat down. I noticed. Hey, Joe. From her, that's a compliment. Hallelujah, you're in like a burglar. How'd you like to take it to the Vallejo Social Club a week from Saturday? Um, I'd like to very much. No, thank you. I'd rather not. No, I, I really would. Sorry, Peanuts embarrassed No, he didn't embarrass Anna. me. I hope Sylvia won't. Don't want to go to the dance. She doesn't want to go to the dance, but Mama insists she goes. And who's stuck? Me. Always stuck. Oh, Pietro. 
Oh, she'd only quit acting like a square. Plenty of guys are willing to take her off my hands, but no, she won't dance with anyone else. Dance? Since when is a dancing this, this crazy jumping? She won't even go to a show without me taking her. I got my own life, you know. My own girlfriends. They're just begging me to take them out. Now you see what you've done? You, you are no better. You take Anna to that dance or you'll be running the mile with a broken leg. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Oh, that girl, she's got such a temper. Who does she get it from? Well, it was the little things. Like the time Father Tomasino gave me a concertina. Mother Catherine said it was against the rules, you know, for one kid to get a present and the others don't. You understand? <laughs> well... He told her I had a gift for music. What gift for music? And he said that if I got the concertina and played it for the other kids, this way they would get a present too. He was a man loved by everyone. Not everyone. Someone didn't. Vuoi scommettere qualcosa? Ok, ci ah, vuole vero. Vuoi scommettere sì, scommettere. Allora, 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 allora. Ehi, hey, Silvio! Ah. Quanti gio hai nelle bestie? Gio who? Chi gio? L'unico gio che ci sia in questo mondo! Di maggio! Ah, gio di maggio? Eh. 381, 1939. Ehi, <laughs> hey, gio di maggio. Pow! I got it, I got it, I got it. Plop! <laughs> What a man, Di Maggio. Mm. Uh, who do you think did it? Huh? Oh, I don't know, Joe. Could have been anybody. But why? How can he live with it? What does it do to his insides? How does he eat? How does he sleep? What kind of a man is he, Silvio? If the cops knew that, Joe, they'd be able to catch him. Yeah. I could have been with him that night, you know. Instead, I was in Santa Rosa. I could have been right here, but I didn't want to spend the money for bus fare. Do you ever find yourself thinking about what you were doing that night? Yeah. I was playing cards. At home? No, at the Vallejo Club. We got a game there every Friday night. I just can't get it out of my mind. The way he died. In an alley. You got to stop thinking about it. Maybe a job will help you. Ah, but more than a job. What you need is a home. Mama likes you. Anna likes you. I like you, Joe. We got an extra room. Oh, no, you Silvio. move in and stay with Silvio, us. Silvio, I can't. You come over. It's settled. Tomorrow you pick me up. Drop me off at the shop. Take the car, get your stuff, and you move in with us. Huh? Thanks, I'd like that. I'm glad to be able to do it. For Father Tomasino.
give you, it's after three o'clock. Would you like me to make you a cup of chocolate? I'm all right, honey. Why don't you go back to bed? Sometimes it helps you to sleep. You're as bad as mama. Why don't you leave me alone? Oh, I'm up anyway. It will only take a minute. Sorry. What are you doing up? Can't you sleep either? I I heard Silvio. I don't know how he does it. Works all day long and walks the floor half the night. I'm making him some chocolate. Do you want some? Yes, thanks. How long has he been doing that? Do you know what's bothering him? He never talks about it. Mom and I, no. He's never gotten over Angelina Poletti, a girl he met in Italy during the war. They were very much in love. They were going to get married. Then something happened, and they didn't. Whatever it was, it hurt him very deeply. This walking the floor, it's been going on that long? Mama says ever since he came home from the war. I need some more milk, Joe. Mm -hmm. I live with the man, I work with the man. He treats me like a brother, but I still haven't got a thing. Kilrain's in the same boat? He's no closer to the answer. Boy, I thought I had it nailed, though. He doesn't sleep nights, he walks the floor. Then I find out he's been doing it for years. Was he walking the night the priest was killed? Well, according to the coroner, Father Tomasino was killed at 11 o'clock. According to Malatesta, he was playing cards at a place called the Vallejo Club. It's a regular game every Friday night. Well, that shouldn't be too tough to check. But I haven't had a chance. Last couple Friday nights, he's been taking me to the fights. He says he doesn't want me to blow my money in a card game. <laughs> the more you tell me, the more he sounds like a nice guy. I'll tell you after I check his alibi. You want to know something? Hmm. I hope it stands up. You're getting a little mixed up, aren't you, kid? Maybe, but I never had a home before. Not until now. Hey, Joe! Oh, excuse me. <laughs> hey, Joe, I should have told you. No use getting dressed. Anna's not going to the dance with you. Since when? Since I was a comedian this afternoon. Mm -hmm. She bought a new dress. I had to open my big mouth and tease her how excited she was about tonight. Suddenly she made up her mind. She said the only reason you are taking her is because Mama and me want you to. Oh, Silvio. I'll handle it. Don't try it, Joe. She'll only get mad at you. I was taken the day Father Tomasino gave me the concertina. About the dance, Joe, forget it. Pietro will take her. You know, you're a great little fixer. Thanks a lot. You're breaking my heart, Gillespie. Five girls tonight and only you? What? They've never been out on a date before. How old are they? Sixteen. Oh, I'm dying, I'm dying. No. I told you I'm hooked with my cousin tonight. 
Can I help it if she's an albatross around my neck? I told you I'm not going to go to the dance with you or anyone else. I heard you. You ought to be ashamed. You guys can turn it too much, you say. Parlare così di tua cugina. Hey, ma we hit me for you, do nothing. Talk like that about your cousin. Shame on you. What do you mean it's all right? Nothing is all right. What's happening? What's going on? I talked to a friend, that's all. Right away, it's for the United Nations. What did he say? It's all right. It doesn't make any difference what he said. I'm not going to go to the dance, period. I stay home and study shorthand. Will somebody please tell me what's going on? If I could get a word in here edgewise, maybe I could straighten it out. It is straightened out. Anna, Pietro will take you. In a million years, in two million, I wouldn't even go to the door with him. Oh, you shut up. Anna. Big deal. Biggest deal in the world. Where are you going? I'm gonna eat a worm. Pietro! Pietro, you come back here! Joe, you are my friend. Will you please tell me what's going on in my own house? Anna, I know how you feel. None of your business. Please go to the dance with me tonight. No. But we had a date tonight. At least tell me why you changed your mind. What are you so at me for? Because you're a jellyfish. You don't want to take me to this oh, dance. Oh, yes, I do. But Mama pushes no. you. Pietro pushes you. Sylvia pushes you. They push you over a cliff if you don't say yes. Anna, uh, no, well, nobody's Take pushing. your hands off me. I don't want anyone to have to be nice to me. Uh, I'm... I'm not asking you for Silvio, I'm not asking you for Pietro, I'm not asking you for Mama. I'm asking for myself, will you please go to the dance with me? I told you no. Anna, you made a date tonight with me, not with one of your idiots, and you're not going to stand me up. Now, are you coming out or do I come in after you? Anna, a locked door isn't going to stop me. Now, I'm not fooling around anymore. Come out here this very minute. You know what's wrong with you? Everybody babies you in this house. Well, I'm not about to. Now, come on out here. All right. All right, you've had it. Step back, lady, because I'm coming through. Joe, do you like the new dress I bought? Uh, you mean to tell me you're going to go to the dance with me? Of course. Then why do you make me go through this big deal of breaking through the door? I wanted to make sure that you wanted to take me. Now I'm sure. So please go. Let me finish, huh? Um, uh, be downstairs in ten minutes. I'll be there in five. Joe, you're my boy, Joe. Oh, you're my boy. Oh. Joe, here, take the car. All right, good. Here's some money. No, no, Maybe I don't use it. No, no, I don't Anything you want, Joe. Hi, with anyone? Mom, me. There. Yeah, I know. I was just stalling. It's not that I don't like it, but I'm a coward when it comes to doing it. I'm glad so am I. Let's grab a couple of chairs while we can. I think I can manage. I 
had almost forgotten people dance like this. Every time I've been here with Pietro, I've limped home with a broken back. You dance very well, Joe. I usually have to apologize to everybody on the floor. I guess it's you. Joe, thanks. For what? For making me come with you tonight. It's a pleasure. Well, they've just lost me again. How about some punch? You order it. I'll be right back. All right. Silvio Malatesta been around tonight. Friday's his night. Last couple of Friday nights we've been going to fights together. He keeps beefing about missing his game. I thought maybe I'd find him here. Are you a friend of Silvio's? Yeah. You wouldn't be Charlie Cunio, would you? No. Good thing. If you were, I think maybe we'd throw you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm glad I'm not Charlie Cunio. You gonna be seeing Silvio? Oh, yeah. I see him all the time. Tell him Vince DePaul wants a chance to get his money back. Cute fella, Silvio. Last time he was here, he won six straight pots. All of a sudden, he looks at his watch, says it's nine o'clock, and he's got to meet Charlie Cuneo to play snooker. When was that? Uh, two weeks ago last night. He hasn't been back since. And he's walking around with a pocket full of my money. Come on, talk on your own time. Deal. Most guys have their wives call up when they're winning. <clears throat> Silvio has to invent a friend. You tell him I don't think there is a Charlie Cuneo. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell him. Duty calls, baby. I'm yours. No, thank you. Be grateful. I'm rescuing you from a lifetime of loneliness. Get out of my way, please. Come on. Still want some punch? Brother Dance. Anybody know where there's an all-night monastery? Who's the chick? Anna Malatesta. Lives on my block. A real live living doll, huh? Nice. That's a trouble, Frankie. She's a snob. She won't hardly talk to anybody. Step down, pal. This is a tag dance. We're not buying. Sorry, friend. It's the rules. This is one big happy party. Well, why don't we keep it that way, huh? <coughs> Joe! Let's get out of here. No, Joe! That's Frankie Pelletrini. He's a prize party. He'll kill you. Apologize to the lady, Frankie. <clears throat> How about it, Frankie? I'm sorry. She can't hear you. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, How about another waltz, fellas? Committee. Oh, Anna not home yet. Look, Mama, it's almost one o'clock. Good. I hope they don't come home all night. Mama! Take your feet off the table. Oh, Mama. You don't know Pietro. Your cousin, she is lonely. Like Silvia's lonely. Enough there is one in the family. Oh, leave me out of it, Mama. You are sick with it. No wife, no bambini. I don't want your cousin. She should be like that, too. Anna! Oh, did you have a good time? Oh, wonderful time. Where's Joe, honey? He's trying to find a place to park. 
Pietro, I love you. You should have been there tonight. Hey, Joe. <laughs> what happened to you? It's nothing. Hey, somebody slug you? Joe, tell them. Tell them what you did to Frankie Pellettrini. Frankie Pellettrini? Forget it. Oh, no. What happened, huh? What happened? Frankie started trouble, so Joe made him apologize to me in front of the whole room. No. He made him get right down on his knees and apologize. Frankie Pellettrini, wow. <laughs> I ran into Vince DePaul tonight. He told me about you walking out in the last poker game. He says he's waiting for you to come around so he can get even. Ah, that pigeon. He's lucky I left. Another half an hour and I would have owned his truck. See you in the morning. What's the matter with him? I don't know. He suddenly got quiet on the way home. I thought it was on account of the fight. Uh. No, it, it wasn't the fight. That boy's got trouble. Big trouble. What you all dressed up for? Something I gotta do. It's okay to take a couple hours off? Sure. Anything wrong? No. no. Just gotta see a guy in China. Okay. My turn to work tonight anyway. See you home. Sure. Hold on, Joe. I'll check the name. Frank Gillen. Give me a run on Charles Cuneo. Wait a minute. Any description, Joe? Hmm? No, Frank. Right. Who is Charles Cuneo, Joe? I found out Malatesta wasn't playing cards at the club like he said. He left around 9 o'clock. Said he was going to meet a fella named Charlie Cuneo, and they were going to shoot some snooker. So far, I haven't been able to find any Charlie Cuneo, and no one down here seems to know who he is. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Yeah, Frank? No? All right, thanks. Nothing on any Cuneo. Did you check the phone book? I did, and the city directories. I found seven Cuneos, but no Charlie. Check the utility companies and the motor vehicles. If we don't come up with a Charles Cuneo, Malatesta's got no alibi. Right, Gillen. Bye. Sure? Sure, I'm sure. I don't know any Charlie Cuneo. Well, that racks it, buddy. The game was for only one fin. The other fin's for what you know about Charlie Cuneo. What makes you think I know anything? You missed the setup when I mentioned his name the last time. 695 Clay Street, apartment 4C. Ask for Vita. Why Vita? Well, I do a little collecting for the bookies once in a while. She likes the horses. So do a lot of people. Yeah, but they don't pay off with checks signed by Charlie Cuneo. Hey, buddy. You didn't get it from me. Charlie Cuneo. I don't know any Charlie Cuneo. You play the horses, don't you? Not me, mister. It's against the law. Now get out of here. Look, you gave one of our runners a check you got from Charlie Cuneo. It's bounced three times. Now I want to know where I can find him. <laughs> Ask his bank. I don't know who you are, and I don't know any Charlie Cuneo. I'm not asking you for the money. I'm willing to get that from Cuneo. All I want to know from you is where do I find him? Vita, what's going on out there? Who are you talking to? A salesman, honey. I'm just getting rid of him. You don't want a busted head, mister. Get out of here. My husband works nights and he needs his sleep. Where do I find Charlie Cuneo? Vita? He's a married man and I don't ask questions. Vita! Now beat it before you get the both of us killed. Hey, 
Hey, Joe. How's the boy? Fine. What are you doing at home? I thought you were working tonight. Pietro is there with Julio. Did you see your friend? Huh? The guy in Chinatown. Oh, no, no. I couldn't find him. I, uh, bought Mama some lychee nuts. <laughs> lychee nuts and lotteries. She's crazy about them. Mama should have been Chinese. <laughs> Hey, Joe, how come you're looking for Charlie Cunio? How'd you know? A customer told me. Well, uh, Charlie's an old friend of mine. Yeah? Uh-huh. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Come here. I'm <laughs> <laughs> always doing things like that. How's this for a surprise? Charlie Cunio. Hey, what'd you do to your hair? I washed it. Anna, go see that everything is ready. Now that Joe's here, we can eat. Hey, Mama. Bag of lychee nuts. Oh, Joe, lychee nuts. Hey, what's the matter with you two? You act as if you've never seen each other before. The Charlie Cunio I know is a tall, skinny fella. But when I told you about Joe, you said you knew him. Good time Charlie thinks he knows everybody. After four beers, nobody in a bar is a stranger. There, you see, Rosa? There's another Charlie Cunio. He's the one has been doing all the things she's blaming me for. That'd take six men. Very funny. Eh, so you didn't know each other before. Now you do. Well, what do you think of him, huh? This is Anna's Joe. Nice to meet you, Mr. Cunio. Uh, call me Charlie. The ball and chain here is Rosa. Um, everybody to the table, eh? What's the matter with you? <laughs> Big surprise, Mama. Nobody surprised but me. <laughs> Come on, Joe. I'm gonna go wash up. Joe. Joe, what's wrong? Nothing. Why? I think there is. Do you really know a Charlie Coonan? Oh, sure, sure. He, uh, he owes me $50. That's why I was looking for him. I watched your face when you came in. I think you had more on your mind than $50. What are you talking about? I just don't understand the way you act sometimes. Everything is fine, then all of a sudden you change, like, like you were thinking of something you wanted to forget. Anna, Joe, Venus. What is it? Can't you tell me? Anna, there's nothing to tell. It's... Hi, everybody. You are late. Very well. I have no right to pry into your secret. They are waiting for us. They're still talking about it in Petaluma. Now, get this picture. I'm working off five straight strikes, see? I take the ball and whammo! A perfect shot. So what happens? A 7-10 split. Oh, I don't know whether to cry or to get mad. So I get mad. I take the ball again. <clears throat> Nobody ever threw a ball so hard. The 10 pin hits the side of the alley, bounces over to the 7 pin. I get my spare and a 278 game. <laughs> <laughs> Am I lying, Rosa? <laughs> How do I know? I never got out of the house. Uh, hey, you bowl, Joe? No, no, no. I shoot pool. Bowling's too expensive for me. So's pool. You play with me. Here he goes again. I don't know why you always play with him. All I ever hear is about how much money he takes away from you. Just once, I'd like him to come home a loser. <laughs> That'll be the day. You know, Joe, Silvio's my private pigeon. Whenever business is uh, bad on Saturday nights, I drive down from Petaluma, play a little snooker with Silvio. Last time I come down, I had to take him out of a poker game to slaughter him. So I heard. The fellas at the Vallejo Club are a little hacked at Silvio. But I thought that was Friday night. Oh, sure, that's right. Saturday, Rose's mother was coming. I had to stay home. So what does he do? Sleeps all day. Why? 
because he doesn't get to bed till three o'clock. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for you to get to that. Silvio, tell her, what time did I leave you? Oh, about one o'clock. It was 1.20. Took me an hour and 30 minutes to drive home. Ten minutes to get undressed. Anna, you're a nice girl. When you get married, please trust your husband. Don't keep track of every minute of his time. A lot of reasons I got to trust you. Please, Rosa, we're not home. We are all finished. Let's go to the other room. Come on, Charlie. I got a beautiful bottle of Galliano. I want you to try it. It's going to be a lovely evening. I've seen those two when they get started. They are wonderful. Everything is wonderful. Do you feel all right? I've never felt better in my life. I gotta go uptown, keep the party going, and I'll be back as quickly as I can. I've got something to celebrate tonight. You know better than to bring me fried rice. With my stomach, it's got to be boiled. Look here, ladies, you wouldn't join the chow van ho pak van, gonna. Too much lousy whiskey, huh? Too much lousy chow yuck. And you did it to me, you and your cooks. You miserable excuse for a Chinese restaurant owner. Hey, Joe. Well. What are you doing here? I've been looking all over for you. I called the hall. They said you always eat here. I had the Chinatown beat for 20 years. Now I'm a rice addict. <laughs> What's on your mind? I want you to put me on the reinstatement list. I'm ready to go back to work. Well, you're pretty hard to keep up with, kid. I've still got a couple of boys trying to find that Charlie Cuneo for you. He found me, and everything checks out right down the line. He was with Silvio the night Father Tomasino was killed. They were playing snook until after 1 o'clock. Silvio is as clean as a bird. Well, you sound mighty happy about it. He loved Father Tomasino. He was grieving for him as much as we all were. On him, it looked different. You know, Kilrain was right. A man isn't guilty by the look on his face. And I spent an hour with Kilrain this morning trying to convince him that he might be wrong. Every lead we've had has gone sour. Now this happens. I don't know what I would have done if it had been Malatesta. As much as I want to do something for Father Tomasino. The way it worked out, he's done something for you. You said yourself you've never had a home. Maybe this was his way of finding you one. Well, I'll see what I can do about speeding up your reinstatement. How about a cup of tea? Oh, no, no, thanks. I gotta do some shopping before the store's closed. Listen, do you have any place where I can go without being treated like a tourist? <laughs> Sammy Yun, right down the street. Tell him I sent you. You know what I'm gonna do for you if this works out? I'm gonna buy you a pair of chopsticks. <laughs> Gold-plated. all that? Where are the Cunos? Boy, you duck out just in time. It turned into a first-class battle. Our house wasn't big enough for them, so they went home where they could have more room to fight. Oh, that's fine. And I got Charlie a couple bottles of champagne. What you buying wine for him? He loused up the whole evening. Not for me, he didn't. I tell you what, we'll save this for Charlie and we'll have the other one. Mama! Oh. Wait, I got something for you. A bag of lychee nuts. Touch the others yet. Here, <laughs> and another present for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> What's in it? Open it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Chinese pajamas. Brocade in solid gold thread. The man at the store said the dragons will never turn green. What am I going to do with it? You wear them when you eat the lychee nuts, silly. <laughs> Don't I get something for it, like a, like a little kiss? Oh, sure, Joe. <laughs> peanuts! Is peanuts home yet? Uh-uh. Look what I got for peanuts. It's a bodybuilding set, you know, for the arms, the legs, the back, and everything else. Where's Anna? Upstairs. Good. Silvio. For Silvio. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> a fishing pole? Oh, no, Joe. You sure you didn't pick up the wrong package at the store? You're a dope. It's a pool cue. Oh. The 
Best snooker play in San Francisco. Help me pick it out for you. If you can't beat Charlie with that, you might as well give up the game. Oh, Joe, it's beautiful. I don't know what to say. Just say you're my friend and shake my hand. What for? We didn't have a fight. Just shake my hand. I don't understand, Joe, but you're my boy. Excuse me. Oh, hey, open the wine. We'll be right down. Whatever his trouble was, it's over now. Just a second. For me? Why? Because I love you and I want to marry you. Don't play games with me, Joe. I'm not playing any games with you. I want to marry you. What about the things that were bothering you? The secrets you wouldn't talk about? They're gone. But you had them. They're gone now. How can I be sure? No, Joe, it has to be for real, not halfways. I need you, Anna. I need you very, very much. Holy sweet Maria. Hey, Mama! Mama, it's happened! My little Anna. My little Anna. Well, we're gonna get married. You're telling me. Oh, I'm so happy, I'm gonna cry. Oh, <laughs> Joe, I'm going to throw you the biggest wedding no bitch has ever seen. When do you want it? Now, wait a minute. Don't, don't rush us. We haven't even had a chance to talk about it. What is there to talk about? I'll give you until next Sunday. We have open house. We tell everybody, huh? Let's go downstairs. We'll drink some champagne. Come on. <laughs> You only got it too bad, or else you're gonna run out pretty soon, you know that. The Pacific Ocean will run dry first. Ah, bravo, I'm not there, anybody with an empty glass, sound off! Ah. Ah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Good, good. You want some point? Yeah, yeah. I'm give it a Ah, mama. No, no, no. Anything wrong with the wine? No, I had two glasses already. That's enough. Ah, come on, have another one. No. Then maybe you put on your new Chinese pajama. Show everybody. No, come on. Get me get me. Get me. Get me. Get me. Yeah, my mom. Well, now only your daughter is left, Mrs. Brangiato. Uh, all she does is look at television. The only men she sees are selling soap. I keep telling her, you can win money on television. A vacation, a mean coat, an automobile, but a husband, no. I guess she's going to be with me forever. Maybe you should break the television. Eh, c'è sempre speranza. Hey, Joey, jo jo Joey. Yeah, yeah. You and me are going to have a little talk. I'm going to teach you how to handle your wife. Is that right? Sure. First you get a whip and then a chair. Yeah. And then you, you tell her who's the boss. Mm -hmm. And remember. It's got to be one boss to a house. Yeah. Uh, hey, when are you going to tell me who's the boss in our house? Uh, of course, you, you got to tell them very slowly, you know, nice, uh, gentle. Yeah. See, I've been married 22 years oh. to my wife, yeah. But somehow this day. <laughs> Quiet, everybody! Quiet! Quiet! Everybody shut up! I'm going to make a toast. Toast? Yeah, yeah. Toast. 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 Uh, now, wait a minute, Silvio. Another glass of wine and you'll give me the house. What's the matter? <laughs> Don't you want to be my partner? Okay, I'll give you the store. And the boat. You be the boss. I work for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> to Joe and Anna. And ten little bambini. <laughs> <laughs> Noisy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I never thought we had so many friends. There isn't a soul in the house. Hold it, Joe. Hold it. I want to get a picture. There. Hey, Ralph. Yeah. Bring the camera. You get out of there. Yeah. Oh, see, abbracciatevi, abbracciatevi. Joe. Ah, Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe, there's some guy outside who wants to see you. I see him in the week. I can't. Tell him to come in. I can't. I'm on the phone anyway. He says he's double par. Uh, excuse me, boss. I am the boss. Yeah, you're the boss. Anna. Anna. Telling you, Gillespie. It's the Second Emancipation Proclamation. I'm it's free. It's true, Gillespie. Why don't you come over and bring some of those Sacred Heart girls? Why not? Everyone else in the neighborhood's here. So you finally showed, huh? Get Parker. Come on up. 
No, Joe. Oh, it's gonna be all right, but don't mention I was a cop. After we get upstairs, you and I'll find a nice quiet corner, then we'll decide how we're gonna break it. Here, Joe. I got a... All right, what's this all about, Gillen? This is Frank Wilkins. He heads up a detective agency. Hi. Hi. Well, what do you want to... Hey, wait a minute. I gotta get back to the party. This is more important. It'll only take a few minutes. I brought Frank along. Thought maybe you'd like to talk to him. About what? Take a look. Filed yesterday. That's a beating report. Yeah. Guy worked his wife over. What's it gonna do with me? Guy's name was Albert Pinelli. Wife? Vita Pinelli. Oh, yeah, I met her. She probably had it coming. She did. Pinelli knew she was holding hands with somebody. He hired me to find out who it was. Took a trip to Petaluma to get a name from. Charlie Cuneo. You called it. When I spotted his name in Pinelli's statement, I got in touch with Frank. The priest was killed Friday, May the 11th. You want to read the report yourself, or can I tell you? Which is quicker? It's a long report. We got to earn our fee. Frank Tail Vita to the Horizon Club. She got there at 9.17. Charlie Cuneo and another guy was sitting at the table waiting for her. Frank checked. The other guy was Malatesta. At 9.50, Vita and Cuneo left. They visited a half a dozen bars. They had drinks. They danced. Cuneo made a couple of phone calls. At 12.57, they got back to the Horizon Club. Malatesta was waiting for him. Well, and he was there all the time. It could be. But we were paid to tail the dame. There's one thing for sure, Joe. Malatesta's been lying. First, he lied about playing cards at the Vallejo Club. Then he lied about playing snooker with Cuneo. They both lied about that. All that proves is that Cuneo didn't want his wife to know he'd been running around, and he was using Malatesta to cover up for him. Gilrain sees it the other way. You ever been to the Horizon Club, Joe? No. It's less than two blocks from where the priest was killed. The back door leads to the same alley. Oh, come on, Gillen. There must be a hundred doors leading to the same alley. Kilrain talked about me grabbing at air. Nobody's grabbing an air, Joe. We've got one thing to work on. Malatesta's alibi is out the window. We'll take it step by step from there. Kilrain wants to see you tomorrow. Want us to take you back? No. Let me off here. I've got to do some thinking. looking for you all over the neighborhood. Thought I'd get some air. The wine, huh? Drunk on six little glasses of wine. Ah, Joe, I gotta teach you how to handle that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smart fellow, though, Yuri Lerano, see you drunk. Plenty of time for that later. Uh, you better not park there. You get a ticket. Sorry, I had to duck out, but something came up. What, Joe? What's wrong? Uh, I got some bad news about a friend. Who? My head's coming apart, eh? Why don't we talk about it in the morning? Joe? They're back, aren't they? What? The troubles. You've got them again. What is it? Can't you tell me? It's something I have to work out for myself. Maybe if I knew I could help. Forget it. We can call it all off, Joe. What are you talking about? I won't hold you to it. You don't have to marry me. You're right back the way you were. I knew you would be when you stayed away so long. I've been going crazy thinking about it. Oh, Joe. Would it make it easier if we don't get married? Anna, it's the one thing I'm trying to hold on to. Then you'll have to let me out. Anna. I can't face life with you in Listen. peaks and drops with no in between. It's bad enough now. I can't talk about it. You've got to understand. But how can I? How can I? You don't even tell me what I'm supposed to understand. 
one way or another, it'll straighten itself out in the next couple of days. I hope you understand that. I would like some information about a boy who was raised here. Mother Catherine would be the one to see. She isn't in now. Who is it you wanted to ask about? His name is Martini, Joe Martini. Are you a friend of Joe's? We are planning to get married. You are? Mother Catherine is not only going to be surprised, she's going to be hurt that Joe hasn't told her. As a matter of fact, we haven't seen him in weeks. Before that, was he coming here often? At least a couple of times a week. He's a great favorite with the children, especially when he's in uniform. Uniform? His police uniform. When he walks through the door, even the toughest little monsters quiet down. You have no idea how we've missed him. How, well, we have a little... How long has Joe been a policeman? Ever since I've known him. I've been here a year. Joe is still on the police force, isn't he? I don't know. Oh, about five minutes ago? No. No, I can't locate him. Will do. Right. Yes, miss? I'd like to see the chief of police, please. I'm sorry, he's going to City Hall. He won't be back this afternoon. Can anyone else help you? I'd like some information about a police officer. His name? Joe Martini. May I ask who you are? Anna Malatesta. I'm sorry, I can't give you any information about Martini. Can you tell me if he's still with the department? We're not releasing anything about him. He's in some kind of trouble, isn't he? What is it? Why did he lose his job? I have a right to know I'm engaged to marry him. I'm sorry, miss. Who can I see? There must be somebody with authority to tell me. I'm afraid not. We have strict orders. Thank you. <clears throat> Lieutenant Kilrain, Gillen. Martini, get there. I'm coming up. Mrs. Pinelli, your husband isn't here. But even if he was, he knows you were with Cuneo that night. Now, you've got nothing to lose, and you can help us if you'll answer a few questions. What's to answer? That private eye wrote it all up. I've got this to show for it. Please try to remember exactly what happened after you met Cuneo and Malatesta at the Horizon Club. Remember? I'll never forget it. Some gag. Collected for a book. I should have pegged you for a cop. Answer the question, Vita. Well, the whole evening was a mess. Always before Charlie came into the club on Saturday nights. Tell his wife he was coming in to play snooker with Malatesta. They'd play until about 12, and then Charlie'd come by to see me. Who's watching the store? If I'd known there was gonna be this big an audience, I'd have brought my bubble. Go on. Well, I was a dope to see Charlie on a Friday night. My husband works a split shift. He gets home by two. But Charlie was stubborn, so I said, OK. We made a date for 9 o'clock, and when I walked in, he was with his pal, Silvio. Not a bad-looking guy. First, I was kind of glad Charlie brought him along. What a clump he turned out to be. He was beefing when I walked in, and he kept on beefing. He didn't approve of Charlie stepping out on his wife, and he was all teed off of being used as an alibi. Is that why you and Junior left him? Well, it was either that or bust a chair over his head. Oh, but I tell that clump off. I asked him if his life was so pure and lily-white that he could go around telling other people what to do. He sure took it big. I thought he was going to slug me. So I walked, and Charlie went with me. 
Did Cuneo leave you at all any time during the evening? No, only when he went to use the phone. Who'd he call? He's trying to reach Silvio back at the Horizon Club. He was afraid the square would get in touch with his wife. Did he talk to him? No, he wasn't there. Exactly what time was that? Well, I was in no mood for exact times. Well, approximately. Oh, first time about an hour after we left. Maybe 10.30. Tried again an hour later. Then around 1 o'clock, we went back to the club and he was there. Are you sure he wasn't there all the time? Maybe he just didn't want to answer the phone. Oh, Charlie jumped him about that right away. Silvio said he went out for about an hour, wanted some air. And that's all he said for the rest of the night. Just sat there and stared at us. Gave me the creeps. Now, I don't think the guy's in his right mind. Well, that'll be all, Miss Finale. Thanks. If there's anything more, we'll get in touch with you later. Before I go, I'd like to set one thing straight. Charlie's a clod, but he's a good spender. Likes to dance, hold hands, have somebody around to laugh at his lousy jokes. But that's all there was between us. I wouldn't want you thinking there was anything more than that. If you can sell that to your husband, I'll buy it too. Well, I guess that locks it in, son. We'll take it from there. No. Let him. It'll be easier on you. Anna Malatesta just left my office. Somehow she found out you're a cop. She thinks you're up to your neck in trouble and that's how you lost your badge. I couldn't tell her any different. Look, I know this is rough on you, son. I wish it didn't have to be. Where do we pick up Malatesta? Lieutenant, you haven't got a motive. A man doesn't kill without a reason. Maybe he had one. We just don't know it yet. Look, Martini, for weeks you've been on our hair trying to blow the whistle on Malatesta. We wouldn't buy it. Now we're ready to and you're on our hair again. Just where do you stand? Lieutenant, if Malatesta killed Father Tomasino, I'll walk him to the gas chamber myself. But all we've got so far is the fact that he wasn't at the Horizon Club for about an hour. That still doesn't put the knife in his hand. He could have been out for some air, he could have gone to the movies. But you pick him up now and the papers will get it. I'm thinking of what it's going to do to his family. His mother, the kid brother, his cousin. That's why I told you to stay out of it. I don't have to think about his family. I can't. That's one of the things about this job that makes it stick sometimes. You throw a lot of maybes at me. Well, the only answer to them is Malatesta. Pick him up, Summers. Lieutenant, unless you get a confession, you've got no case. And you're not going to get any. I know him. I've talked to him about Father Tomasino. He doesn't turn a hair. All he'll tell you is that he loved the priest. In 72 hours, you're going to have to let him go again. Well, isn't that what you want? Maybe you can close the book on this case. I can. I've got to know. I still have a chance with him. You haven't. All I ask for is a couple of days. You've had almost a month. But I've got different cards now, and if I play him right, Malatesta will walk in here by himself. What can you lose? It'll make it easier for all of us. He can pull it off. I haven't heard anything yet to make me think he can. Anna thinks I'm jammed up in something. I'm going to keep working this angle until it gets to Silvio. I know him. If he thinks I'm out on a limb, he's going to try to get me off. You still got your gun? Yeah, but I got it packed away. Well, get it and keep it on you. I think Malatest is our man. And to me, he adds up a killer and a violent one. You don't know him. All I know is what you've told me. He's kind and he's gentle and he likes you. Well, he loved Father Tomasino. You carry that gun. That's an order. Yes, sir. I'm on my way to the store now. I forgot something. I came to get it. Joe, maybe you can tell me what's the matter with Anna? What's happening in this house? What about Anna? Oh, she's been in her room for hours crying. She won't tell me anything. I phoned Silvio. She won't talk to him. She won't eat. I took her up a tray. She wouldn't even touch it. What's wrong with Anna, Joe? Does it have anything to do with you? Uh, I don't know, Mama. 
I gotta hurry. I gotta get to the store. Oh, my house is full of unhappiness. Job. anyone else around. What are you doing to Anna? I don't know what you're talking about. She just called me. She's almost out of her mind worrying about you. What did she say, Silvio? She told me you used to be a cop. You got in some kind of trouble. Now you're going to make it worse. You're carrying a gun. Why? It's none of your business. Anything that hurts Anna is my business. Give me that gun. No. I'm going to meet a man at 12.30. I'm going to need it. Why? I'm going to kill him. You're crazy, Joe. If I don't kill him, he can put me in a gas chamber. I'm not going to take any chances. Joe. Come here, Joe. Pull up a chair. Sit down. Look, Joe, last night I told Anna not to interfere, to let you work out your own problems by yourself. I was wrong. My family's been torn apart. I can't let that happen, Joe. You gotta tell me what it is. What have you done? I haven't done anything. I don't expect anybody to believe me. I believe you, Joe. It's not enough, Silvio. Everything is stacked against me. It's my own fault, too. You wanna know why? Because I talk too much. That's the reason the cops dragged me in for questioning. They got a motive, but they can't prove I was in town. The guy I'm going to meet tonight not only can put me in town, but at the parish a half hour before it happened. Before what happened? They think I killed Father Tomasino. They're crazy. You said you were in the hotel room in Santa Rosa. No, I wasn't. One of the bellhops was driving into town, so he gave me a lift. He left me off at the parish house. Instead of going in, I went for a walk. Only I can't prove it. Why should you have to? Don't they know how much Father Tomasino meant to you? Oh, sure, sure. But the only important thing to them is that I had a big argument with Father Tomasino about being kicked off the force. If that bellhop goes to the cops, I'm through. He wants $1,000 to keep his mouth shut. 
expects me to give it him tonight. Pay him, Joe. Pay him. No, no. I'll give you the money. No, Silvio, in a few more weeks, I'll want another thousand, then another. I'll be paying for the rest of my life. I'm going to meet him on the pier. Nobody will be around that late. The body will float out to sea. Even if they do find it, nobody can pin it on me. You can do it, Joe. You can do it. Even if you get away with it, you can't do it. It will always be on your mind. You can't get rid of it. You can't sleep. All night you wait for morning so you can stop being alone. Sometimes you act like a clown. You laugh when there's nothing to laugh at. You gotta have people around so that you don't get a chance to think. But you can't stop thinking because it's inside of your brain and you can't tear it out. I don't, Joe. I don't. But what do you know? The only problem you ever had is whether the salmon are gonna run. Kill somebody. That's how I know. Who? Angelina Poletti. The girl in Naples during the war. She was going to run away with another man. I went crazy. She was found dead after a bombing raid. They never knew how she died. Nobody ever knew. Nobody, Silvio? Nobody. Didn't you confess to your priest? Didn't you tell Father Tomasino? What are you trying to make me say? You just said it. The only argument I had left was that you had no reason to kill Father Tomasino. Well, you just gave it to me. So... Everything you said tonight was a lie. Everything you ever said was a lie. You're a cop. That's why you came here. Pretended to be my friend. Moved into my house. You made love to Anna, I even asked her to marry you just so that you could get at me, didn't you? I have lived in hell for years to keep my family from being hurt. But you don't care what happens to them, do you? Damn you, I'll kill you! Where in God's name, I give my life to make them happy. No more lies. No more lies.
Father. Wait. He wanted to talk to Anna and Joe alone. I think you'd better go in now. Oh. Father Giuseppe. Yeah. Anna, you trust him. Don't make big things out of nothing, Anna. Joe has no more problems now. We straighten everything out. Did we, Joe? He's a good boy. He's going to take care of you and Mama and Pietro. Hey, Joe. If you have to wallop Pietro, it's okay with me. You're the boss now. Okay, Joe. Go now. She'll be right out. Joe. Father Tomasino told me to go to the police. But I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't hurt Mama and Nana, Joe. You know, wherever I went, I saw his eyes. They were gentle, but they knew. He kept getting worse and worse. And then I saw his eyes all the time. I couldn't stand it, Joe. <laughs> Tell me out. I had to do it, Joe. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Oh, sure, Silvio, sure. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Tour to the omnipotent status. At the Mrs. Picardus to us, for Jacate had been made it now. Amen. And all gentium absolutionum et remissionum peccatorum. To all in trivia, to the omnipotent. Joe. Well? The accident beat me to it. I didn't find out a thing. Thank you.